In this video, we're going to learn the basics of HTML and create a basic HTML website using only a text document and a web browser on our computer. You don't need a hosting, you don't need a WordPress account, you don't need anything like that just to learn HTML. All we're going to use is a text document and a browser. This browser is Firefox. This, this will work with Chrome or Safari or any uh, other web browser. And the text editor I'm using is actually just the text editor that comes default with uh, Linux Mint. If you're on Windows, you might want to use Notepad. So if you press your Windows super key, type in Notepad, that'll bring up your text editor. And if you're on Mac OS, it's called Text Edit, I think is the default text editor. But either way, open up a text editor and we'll just type in, this is my website. And now this document's not saved yet. So I'm gonna go to File, Save. And again, these instructions are pretty similar, uh, no matter what computer, what operating system you're on. At the top, we'll change the name. And on Windows, it's going to have this star txt, uh, or star dot txt. And that's basically, Windows is trying to say, hey, keep this dot txt at the end, and call it, you know, my document or something, because they think since you're using a text editor, you're wanting to save text. But we're actually wanting to do a website, and websites have a different file extension. So erase the dot txt and type HTML. So we're going to call this, I'll call it uh, my uh, site dot HTML, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. So I'm on my desktop now, my site, and make sure it's dot HTML or this won't display correctly. So HTML stands for Hypertext uh, Markup Language. And now that I've saved that, we have this file. And for me, by default, when I, I open HTML documents, it'll open it in the web browser. So I can just click on this and it opens up in my web browser. But if that doesn't happen for you, you can always left click and drag and drop it into the web browser to display it also. And now notice before we were at uh, HTTPS, like an actual web page on the internet. But once this file is loaded into the browser, it's just a file on my local computer. So if I were to, to go to the end of this, and erase the, the file name and just go to the desktop, it'll show the desktop of my computer. And I see I have a picture over here and I click this picture and it'll show whatever picture. So we're just because we're doing this, it can be kind of confusing because most of the time in a web browser, you're actually on the internet. But right now we're not. We're just on our own computer. So nobody can see this website except for us because we're not hosting it and serving it to the rest of the world. So don't worry about anything you type in here. It's in a web browser, but it's not. It's, it's private and not being served to the internet. Uh, okay, and now if we change this over here, I can say one, two, three, four, five, go to file, save, and refresh. This is the refresh key over here, the refresh button. And now it says one, two, three, four, five. Um, we can also go six, seven, eight, nine. And you can press like the F5 key on your keyboard to refresh this. Oh, did that do it? Oh, I didn't save over here. So I'm trying to refresh and I'm not getting these next numbers. I need to go to file, save every time. So we save the file and then when we refresh, it'll show 6789. You can press F5 to refresh. You can press this button or if we go 0000, zero, zero, zero file, save, you can click up in the address bar and hit the enter key. And that will also reload the document, this document. So this document here is our web page, and we could put it um, on a USB drive and take it to a different computer, and it will look just like this. And we could upload this document, this HTML document, to a hosting provider, and people would visit our web. We can link it to like a, a .com website, and when people visit that website, it would really show this. This is actually an active, or a, a, a valid website that would display properly on the internet, even though it's just text. But obviously we're gonna do more than just put text in. Um, this is HTML, so we're gonna do some hypertext markup. So to do markup, we wanna change, if I were to erase some of this, uh, to do markup, we need to give some instructions to the web browser of what to do with this text. So to do that, we if we hold the shift key and find your comma, and your period key on your keyboard will create these symbols. And I'm gonna make this larger so that you can see. I'm holding control plus to do that and I'll make it larger over here just in case you're on a phone or something just so you can see this a little bit larger. Um, so these symbols here, it's just the greater than and less than symbol. Anything we put inside of here, we can create what's called an element. Um, well, the whole thing's gonna be an element. It's also called a tag. So if we do a B, that's the bold element. And notice it's a different color on 
uh, on my computer. If it's, it might be the same color for you. It doesn't really matter if it changes color in your text editor. It'll have the same effect on your text uh, in the browser. We do a tag at the beginning and a tag at the end. So at the end, we also put a B, but we want it to be, um, it's called opening and closing tags. So we'll use the next uh, key over, but not holding shift this time, the kind of the question mark key, but without holding shift, it's this backslash. And so the backslash means, you know, stop doing this. So start doing B, which is bold, and then stop doing B. This is a little confusing, but it'll make sense. We'll go to save and see what this looks like. So now it created everything we typed in here is bold. You notice that? Um, and if we go after we stop doing B and say, uh, hello, and click file, save, refresh. Now the hello is not bold, but everything else is. Um, and notice that, so if I zoom this in, sort of the hello gets dropped down below because it runs off the edge of the screen, but it doesn't do that over here. And I think if I were to make this large enough, then all of a sudden it does also. So, which brings us to a good point. It doesn't really matter uh, where we type in over here, the words. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I go file, save, it's all just gonna appear in a straight line until it gets to the edge of the web page and it's gonna drop down. So the formatting, what we call that, the formatting that we do in our HTML document doesn't necessarily look the same. In fact, if I do a bunch of spaces in between and go file, save, it's gonna be unaffected. It just puts a single space and doesn't do. That's just the rules that it follows. So there is a way to create this effect and to do these spaces, we have to do another element. We need to do a, a what's called a line break. So if we want to, uh, this hello to be, well, with these numbers, we want these numbers to be down below here. We need to, we don't have to do the spaces in here because that doesn't do anything for us. We need to do what's called a break, BR. So we do the opening tag, then BR, and then the closing, or the, uh, the opening bracket, and then the closing um, bracket. And now, if we go file, save, and refresh, then that's going to be break the line and push everything after that down onto a new line. So we could come down again, BR. Oh, and mine automatically opens and closes it for me. Or it's not actually called closing. Closing is when you do this backslash. The BR only has one, it just breaks the line. So when we when we create these symbols, we're giving instructions to the computer to do something. Uh, so we could say P is another one. We do like paragraph and P. So when we do a paragraph, we say this is a paragraph. And then we go file, save, refresh. It creates a new paragraph. And paragraph automatically has a space above it and a space below it. So if we want to create another paragraph, we can go P and say another paragraph. And then we always have to end the P. I call that end P, but it's really backslash P to make sure that that ends. I'll show you what happens if we didn't end it. So we refresh this. Now we have another paragraph. If we didn't end the P and we did start it, it's just going to keep going. It's going to include this 6789 as part of our paragraph. So if we go file, save, now it thinks the 6789 is part of our paragraph. Same with bold. And we can add these together. We can do a P and a B. So paragraph, bold. Uh, let's save it. Refresh. Now it thinks all of this, oh, and look, I even put an extra character in there and it add that extra character in. But it thinks all of this is bold and part of the same paragraph. If I only want the word another to be in bold, I can create the um, open and close here and do uh, backslash B to kind of end that boldness. And now it only the word another will be in bold. So hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and practice some of this. So another fun element that people don't usually learn until later on is like a button. If you just type in button here, and then whatever we can say, click me, whatever you type in between here, you're noticing a pattern here, uh, will appear on our button. So we go file, save, and then refresh. Now we have a button that says click me. When you click it, it doesn't really do anything, but the button is here. Uh, so we have this is called our element button 
and each one of these is called a tag. We have our opening tag for button and our closing tag for button. And so we have a button here that says click me. What if we got rid of click me and we just had button and close button? We'll go save, refresh. It creates a button, but it's really, really small. See that? And there's nothing in it. We could have a number, five. Whatever we type in there will be in our button. So any text, and you'll notice that a lot. We have these, it's, the, the way that this symbol works is sort of pointing, whatever it's pointing to, oh, everything inside of there is what gets displayed. And the large side, the BR, the P, the button, does not get displayed. Instead, that's instructions for the web browser telling it how to style or telling it what type of content it is. Uh, we could do, another one that you can do is, you can do, uh, we'll do a, a paragraph, okay? And we'll do, uh, we'll do regular text, but then we can go small and we can say small text. And then we'll end our small, you always have to end these tags. So we'll end this. And then we have this element called small. And if we go save, so now we have a regular text. And then notice this is a little bit smaller, this small text, it's smaller. So we, we, we've created some small text. And notice there's no space between those two because we didn't do a space between text and small. So it's as if this were to all be invisible. So if I hit the delete key real quick, it's just text small. That's why it says text small over here. I'll do control Z to undo that. So what I should have done was put a space either after text or before small if I want to have that space in there. These elements can also have attributes given to them that will further change the way the text appears. So for example, on this paragraph here that says this is a paragraph, we can go inside of the element. And anything we type in here, it turns to a green color because it thinks we're giving it instruction, at least on my editor. And if I go file, save, if I just type in gibberish and refresh, it doesn't change anything. It's completely unaffected. That's because anytime it doesn't recognize, anytime the, uh, the web browser doesn't recognize something that you've typed inside of these um, elements, it'll just ignore it. It just throws it out and says, I don't know what that was, so I'm just gonna pretend it's not there. But it still does display everything that it does recognize, like text. Um, that's important to know because if you have a typo, um, it's not gonna show correctly, but it's also not gonna give you an error. It'll just ignore it completely. Uh, but what we're going to type in here is style because style is a, an attribute that is recognized. It changes the style of the text that's within this P and this end P. Zoom out a tiny bit there. So the way style works, we type the word style and then we use the equals sign with no spaces or anything. We just say style equals and then we do a quote and then we say if we want to change the color, for example, we do color colon and then whatever color we want this to be, so blue. If we go File, Save, Refresh, it'll change that paragraph and only that paragraph to blue. So anything between this P and this closed P tag paragraph is gonna be blue. And if we wanna change it to red, we just type in red, File, Save, Refresh, and now that's red. If we want just the, this, uh, Let's change just the six, seven, eight, nine right here. We want only that to be a different color. We can come over here and we just go, uh, let's make it, we'll just say style equals, and then we'll type in blue. So if we were to do this, style equals blue, okay? And then we just go end. Let's see if this is gonna do anything. File, save, refresh didn't do anything. In fact, all of this is, is ignored. This is ignored. This is ignored. It doesn't show anything. It looks exactly the same. And that's because we added an attribute without giving it an element. So attributes have to be applied to an element. So in this case, we could do uh, bold if we want to make this bold, and then we end the bold. Now, if we go, uh, well, and we also have to say color. We can't just say blue. We have to say color, colon, blue. Uh, we already did blues. Well, we'll change it. We'll just look at it real quick here. So it changes those numbers to blue and it makes them bold. And we can type in all kinds. You can do like a, we can do light blue. 
Um, there's a list of different colors that you can look up and use. So we save that, refresh that, and now it's light blue. Uh, we could do purple. So you're getting the idea. You can change the colors over here. Uh, and that's called an attribute. All right, and that's changing the text color. Um, we can actually change a couple different things. Like one of the cool attributes we can do is a text. So this button here, where is that at? Let's change this button again so that it says, click me. And a lot of times with a button, they'll do this. So save, refresh. Now this button says, click me. And I kind of want this button to be down here instead. So to do that, I'm going to do a break. Remember we did that thing here, a line break. There's actually better ways to position this, but for now, I'll just go BR and put that right there and go file, save, refresh. Now we have a break. And if we click it, nothing happens. And if we hover over it, it kind of uh, darkens a little bit, but that's all that it does. If we'd like a little tooltip to pop up, a little hint to give more information about what happens when you click that button, we can add that as an attribute to the button element. We just go to the end of button and hit the space bar, and that's called a title. So we'll say title equals, just like we did with style equals, we do title equals, and then a quote. And we'll say, um, uh, what should we say that the thing is? I am a button to click. We'll just put out the title because this is going to pop up as a tip. You'll see if we go f uh, uh, file, save, and refresh. Now when we hover over, it says I am a button to click. And if we move it away, it doesn't say that. We hover over and wait for a second and this will pop up. Uh, and we can add this to text also. So when you hover over a certain word, it, you can have a, a definition or something pop up or instructions on what you want the person to do. And that's all accomplished by adding an attribute to uh, an existing element. So that's how you can do uh, a tip is just by doing the title. Now, a lot of tutorials you're going to be, look at have this at the top. They'll have a uh, an element called HTML, just like this. And then at the, at the bottom of their thing, I'm going to erase part of this. They'll have they'll close it, so they'll do this and go close HTML, and that's basically just saying it's just giving the the web browser additional information. So the, it already knows the file is called the .html file, but this just tells it more explicitly anything from here to here is HTML. Oh, which is kind of a good point. We I, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can span a paragraph very very long. So if we did a, a paragraph here and we said, uh, hi, uh, this is a paragraph, one, two, three, and then we close that paragraph, it doesn't all have to be on the same line. You can have it pages and pages and pages long. And so the, the, the opening tag for the element and the closing tag, they don't have to be on the same line. It doesn't matter at all. All the computer is going to do is just look and it's going to keep going anywhere on the document until it finds the close for this. So this is all one element. And that's the same thing now with this HTML. It starts it, it reads everything inside, and then it ends it. Because you can have elements inside of elements, just like we did this paragraph, and then a bold inside of that paragraph. Um, so that's the basics. Um, and then there, there's also, you know, a lot of common ones we'll talk about. You have the head of the document, you know, and then inside here you have some information uh, that's pertaining that the, the user of the website doesn't usually see, and then you end the head, and then you have the body, and then the body is like this part that we just did. Um, but again, I'm going to do another tutorial on that, but I think I'm going to end this one right now, and hopefully this has just shown you um, some pretty cool ways that you can just get started really quickly. I'm going to link to this w3schools.com, and it has it's a good reference for all of these. It explains every one of these uh, elements, and you can learn lots of new ones there and some other additional um, courses too, and it's all free information. Uh, so I'm going to link to that. But I'll make a, a more detailed um, showing how to add like images into your website, for example, uh, and make more interactive, like make a button that you can actually click and it'll actually do things. But this is a good start to kind of... Uh, kind of drive home that idea of what really is a website. It's just a text document that is formatted so that a web browser knows what to do with the text inside of it. 
uh, and it looks pretty basic right here and hopefully it's, it's helped you understand but this is really the basis for everything and if you want to see a website uh, let's go back here uh, you can always right click on a website and go view page source and it will tell you all of the all of these same things here so if we scroll down to the the body of this so it'll have a lot of these things we have this span this div these are ones that we did, haven't really looked at this input is where, like a field that you can type in but these are all elements uh, and then they close the element they close the span they open the div they close the div so a lot of these um, there's no you know no paragraphs there's no breaks like we used but um, it's the same concept of always opening something closing something uh, and then having a lot of you know markup this is all the markup for this website anyway hopefully that's been informative for you go ahead, ahead and leave uh, questions or comments below if you have any and I look forward to catching you in the next video